In the last session, we discussed about uh, the broad understanding of the international accounting standards on the cost of the asset, the recognition of the asset, and subsequent recognition of that. At the, in that session, we saw that three important items which affect the fixed assets is a depreciation, revaluation, and impairment. In this session, we will try to get more details about the depreciation and how it differs from impairment of assets. Depreciation in accounting is more treated as an allocation of cost. That means depreciation is allocation of the cost over the life of the asset. And depreciation is treated as an expense shown in the income statement and is deducted from the value of the asset while showing on the balance sheet. But how the depreciation is calculated, what are the methods of charging depreciation and the treatment of depreciation is there an accounting standard which deals with the fixed asset. Whereas in India, we have a separate accounting standard called accounting standard 6 for depreciation. So these methods of uh, these standards allow uh, the company to select the methods of depreciation either from the straight line method or reducing balance method or any other method which can be suitable for the company. Let me just concentrate on two methods that is SLM straight line method and the reducing balance method because these two are very popular. SLM in, 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 in SLM method the depreciation is charged on the original cost of the asset minus the salvage value if any. We saw in the last session the original cost of acquisition is the purchase price plus incidental expenses capitalized. So, if, the, if, if a company follows SLM and uses uh, the original cost of the asset as the base, then the depreciation will be same over the life of the asset. Whereas in case of a reducing balance, the depreciation is calculated every year on the opening balance, which is also called the book value, which is also called the net asset, which is also called the written down value in several books. So, in case of SLM, the amount of depreciation remains constant throughout the life, whereas in case of RBM, reducing balance, the depreciation falls over the life. So therefore, the impact of depreciation methods will be there on the profit that is reported by the company to the shareholders. All other things remaining constant, the depreciation in, uh, in RBM will be much higher in early days and very low in the later part of the life, whereas a depreciation in case of an SLM is constant through the life. So therefore, profit under RBM will be very high in the beginning and very low in the later part of the life of the asset. So it depends on the company's accounting policy and a managerial decision to select a particular method of depreciation. So therefore, it is necessary for an analyst or a reader of a balance sheet while analyzing the profit to ask for or look into the methods adopted for depreciation. But a question often comes to our mind, can a company change the method of depreciation? Answer is yes. The accounting standards allow the company to change the method. The change in a method can be for the new assets. The change in a methods of depreciation can also be done for the existing asset, but for the existing asset it can be done with a prospective or for the retrospective effect. Let me pick up the later one, retrospective effect. Suppose if a company is moving from RBM to SLM or SLM to RBM, in the year in which the change is required, the a company is required to calculate the excess amount of depreciation required because of the change and show it in the in the income statement. That means in the year of change, there will be a huge effect on the income statement, profit might vary. So there is a reason, there is a need for the analyst to see if the company's profits are changing drastically, if the operations are not changing, it is possible that the depreciation may be playing a role in, in, in the change in the profits of the company. But Will that affect the economic viability of the company? 
Will that affect the economic profit generating ability of the company? These are not directly visible on the income statement. One has to examine the effect by getting into the other details of the company which are not may or may not be available on the annual reports. How is the how, how, how to use this depreciation amount? What is the relevance of this depreciation amount in the annual report? For example, one can say that you can calculate, determine the life of the asset. This leads us to another question with which we will move to the uh, next session that is depreciation same as impairment? Answer is no. Impairment is comparing the book value with the market value where the depreciation is allocation of the cost. In the next session, we will see first impairment, then we try to compare impairment with depreciation. Thank you very much.